Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is Aaron Trevina, and we have a terrific guest from down in San Antonio. We have Albert Haddad. Um, he is the managing member of Spectrum Lenders in San Antonio. How's it going, Albert? Fantastic, Aaron. I want to thank you so much for this opportunity. I've done some speaking engagement, very simple podcast, but to be very honest with you, I love Zoom, uh, but this is the first time I've done a video where I'm talking to only one individual. I thought I'd be speaking to an audience with questions and answers. So I am ready to answer any questions I can in finance, investments, and banking. Excellent, excellent. I, I guess it, it takes a little bit of the pressure off you just being one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> well, thank you so much. 45 years in the business in finance and investments, and I'm still learning. You, you know, it's funny. It's funny you said that because I told one of my friends about that um, because he's kind of just starting out in, in real estate as well. And I said, hey, I talked to this, talked to this man a, a few days ago, and he says he's been in the business 45 years and he's learning every day. So it shows, you know, how vast the industry is. Yes, it is. It is really growing. Real estate now is a fabulous opportunity. There is so much money out there for investment opportunities. And if you have the right lender that you can match to the right borrower, and that's what we do in consulting. It depends whether it's the hold, fix and flip, or the investment opportunity for a rental property to build your portfolio and retire in 10 to 20 years. But you can be a multimillionaire in real estate and finance and investments, but you gotta look at op, you know, all other opportunities. Sure, absolutely. So I'm just curious, Albert, could we, um, you know, for those of us who don't know you, could you kind of uh, introduce yourself a bit, you know, wh where you're from and- Sure. Uh, I grew up in El Paso, Texas, and I graduated in a biology and chemistry degree. Then I went to Vietnam. I was very blessed and I came back safe and sound. That was uh, back in 69, 70, before your dad was born probably, <laughs> or before <laughs> you were born. <laughs> anyway, uh, God is good. He brought me back to my wife. We have three kids, nine grandkids. I did my postgraduate work in finance. I worked my way through college and banking. And like I mentioned to you, I'm still learning the banking and finance and investments uh, for the last 45 years. Uh, and I'm still learning it today. Excellent. So what was it about kind of investment and banking that, that caught your interest? It's really interesting. I grew up basically, like I said, in banking, uh, through work my way through college. And I've noticed the opportunity, if you have the finance ability to be able to finance a property uh, then and make sure you're buying the property at the right price. And this is the biggest problem that we all had. You learn through experience. There are 101 ways to put a transaction together. One and very important one, make sure that you have your soft costs, uh, that you have your carrying costs, uh, that you have your resale costs, uh, to make sure that the investment you're getting into is a proper investment. And so indeed, you've got to be very, very meticulous and finding the right property is not easy, but it could be done. And so that's what caught my eye in banking. I started buying real estate back in the 70s. We were buying four to five homes a month and we grew our company to about 110 real estate agents. Wow, how about that? <laughs> yeah. If you wouldn't mind, um, for those of us who don't know, just to expand on that, um, you know, what are soft costs, carrying costs, resale costs? Can you kind of go through that, please? Yes, it's really simplistic. A lot of people, you know, want a perfection. And there are so many forms that you can probably procure on any website that's into banking and investments. Number one, your soft costs and carrying costs, doing your due diligence, doing your valuation, making sure that you get the right bids with the right possibility, not necessarily an architect, but look at the property to make sure that your soft cost is in line with what the other costs are gonna be during your remodeling costs. So your remodeling costs, a lot of people don't understand that. You may be an expert, uh, Aaron, and possibly doing a takeoff, but once you have a design in mind on how to modernize a home and how to take it to the next level to increase its value, so your soft costs are very simple. Your attorneys, your contract, make sure that they look over your contract, make sure you have enough time 
make sure you have the earnest money availability to make sure that you're able to perform. When you put up an earnest money contract, you make sure that hey, you're real, you've done your due diligence. And those are the soft costs. They're very simple. It depends on the project. If it's only a home, it could be $500 to $1,000. But it's very important to do your market analysis in the area. What are the street rents? Okay, a lot of people don't take that into consideration. Because if your property doesn't sell, when you flip a property, you know, basically, or re remodel the property and try to resell it, you don't have a carrying cost built into your formula. So you work it backwards. So I build in the soft cost. I build the remodeling cost. Let's take a $100,000 home, okay? So let's say about $1,000 for soft cost, okay, Aaron? Let's take your remodeling cost at about 15,000, okay? So you're left $84,000, you know, possibly, uh, that you can pay for the home, all right? Then you take uh, the closing cost and other contingencies. A lot of people say, well, the contingencies, what are they? I usually factor 1% uh, for the title company, uh, 4 to 5% minimum, uh, maybe 6% on commissions, okay, if I'm going to hire a broker, okay? Then you have 1% to 2% for legal and other contingencies. So we're looking at 10%. So 10% times 100 is another 10,000. So you're down to about maybe $74,000, okay? Then your holding cost, that's called the interest carry, because if you're gonna give me a loan, okay, on the property I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna figure a minimum of 10 to 12% interest if I'm gonna buy the property right away in seven days. Okay, a lot of people say, oh, my credit is excellent. You know, I can go down. Well, when you make an offer on a property, okay, you wanna make sure that you have pre-qualified and got a pre-approval on the loan amount that you can easily call on and close the transaction within seven to 10 working days. As soon as the title commitment is in place, so therefore you make that offer, you, you build yourself another 10%, okay, for profit, okay. A lot of people say, what is this? Well, you're, you're only gonna pay 60 to 64,000? Well, I'm sorry, that's all I'm gonna pay for this home because that's gonna be my cost and be honest with the seller. Say, listen, I'd be glad to show you my cost. And this is my business. I've got to make a 10% profit. So on a seventy-four dollars to $78,000 profit, a lot of people say, I want to make 20%. Well, that's wonderful. But if I'm going to calculate all my holding costs plus the value increase after renovation value, let's say it's $120,000, I'm going to make 20 to 25% net profit if I'm able to buy it around sixty-four dollars to $65,000. I'm sorry, I may be talking too fast. But it's simple mathematics always work your formula backward. Absolutely. Could you um, could you kind of describe what a contingency is and how it kind of fits into what you're uh, describing? Sure. Well, you you know a lot of people go into remodeling there and and thinking, well, you know, I'm going to remodel this home uh, and and that's my cost. So I get three estimates. Okay. I'm not gonna take necessarily the lowest one or the highest one, but I may take somebody that I've done business before. And if you haven't done some business with this particular remodeling company, okay, you may wanna do it yourself. Okay, you may be able to save money. But if you're a novice in this area, make sure you get referrals from some people that have done this business. They're willing to share their contractors and subcontractors possibly, okay? Don't try to do it yourself unless you're an expert and remodeling okay so be very very careful so what's going to go wrong aaron is going to go wrong right and it's very simple to say but i have been in, in in an acquisition area where i buy a home and all of a sudden the cost there's a change order because we found some other problems in the home that was not taken into consideration during my soft cost and due diligence period maybe hiring an engineer or a contractor to make sure that what he's going to give me an estimate on is what I see, but I'm not a trained eye in construction. So make sure you have a good contractor, maybe even an engineer, as I mentioned. Absolutely. Those are the I'm sorry. Those are the contingencies that you need to have. Sure. Absolutely. It seems like having that good engineer contractor is a, uh is a big part of the equation because you know it can it can pay for you in the long run 
Yes, sir. Absolutely. So I know you've mentioned that you had, uh, could you kind of expand a bit more on you saying that you brought on all of these agents and you were buying four or five homes a month? What was going on during that time? Okay. Well, you got to remember, I grew up in the 70s, okay, in this business. And um, uh, what we made a decision on is to get licensed in real estate. You do not have to really have a license. Sometimes people just want to be a principal. But I wanted to learn the business. So I started taking courses in real estate and finance, investments, and talking to lenders and trying to get a line of credit before we even started buying. So we got four or five guys together and we put up a little bit of money and we went to the bank, okay? And the bank said, well, I, uh, I'll lend you a dollar for a dollar. I said, no, sir, I want a minimum of two times the deposit, okay? And he said, what do you mean? If you put 50,000, you want 100,000? I said, yes, sir. And we're all signed personally and guaranteed the loan. Plus we will give you a first lien note on a property. And if there's a first lien note, and deed of trust on the property during the era back in the 70s and 80s, you could assume a loan. Well, right now, you have to make sure when the title transfers that you're able to assume a loan. But 99% of the time, most lenders will not assume, let you assume a loan, okay? So therefore, make sure that you have enough money to pay the first lien. So we went ahead and got a line of credit set up. Then we started recruiting agents. I became a broker within two years after my got my salesman license okay so we started building agents and what we would do is give them the opportunity when they buy the property they would be the listing agent okay and not only that but we will give them a percentage of the profit the reason is we wanted retention so we came up with a very simple formula and therefore we built our company within three to five years to probably a hundred agents and pretty soon they became the competition which is not a problem we were in that business for about 10 years, and then I went on my own in 1980. So during the 70s, we were doing really well, and we were giving our management part of the profit. Uh, so we made a decision. Each manager would buy his own office, and they would retain the agents that they want to retain if the agent wants to go with them in that office. Because we made a decision that we basically wanted to do just strictly investments in real estate and other opportunities, of course. Absolutely. Wow. What a great story. Yeah. Thank uh, you. No, I'm just kind of interested in how, um, you know, how, how you were able to scale. Um, so kind of going from, you know, just starting out, just kind of taking a few courses to be able to, to scaling. What, what does it take yeah. to scale a business like that? Well, you know, it's really interesting. First of all, you've got to, a lot of people want to buy properties anywhere that they feel like it's a time to buy a property when they get a deal. And a lot of people go into different areas. What you have to do as an agent, okay, real estate agent, to learn the business really well, not only do you have to be familiar with the city, but we used to call them a farm. So you pick up a, a zip code, okay? Let's say 79902 in El Paso, whatever the case may be, okay? And then you become the expert agent. So when I started in sales, I was in the top 10% of the sales and taking courses. I took also my CCIM courses, but I wanted to make sure that I'm an expert in the subdivision. So what we would do as a real estate agent, we would give them two options. One of them, this is what I need to do for me to make a profit to buy your home. Or if you like, you do, do, you, you do the remodeling, the owner I'm talking to, and then we'll be glad to sell it for you at market value. Okay, but you've got to be very, very conservative. So when you're dealing with clients and telling them the truth, they either will list with you or kick you out because you're making to a low price and, you know, get another broker that's going to list it for a higher price without remodeling. So you learn it the hard way. It took us about two to three years to really learn the business well. And we made a lot of mistakes. And we got a contractor to work with us that really knew how to do takeoffs. You know, just, just unbelievable. He and his family have been in business for a while. And they were referred to us by a bank or a loan officer like yourself. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I was going to ask um, kind of off that, what does it take to get around those good people, getting in touch with those good contractors, those good engineers who can make the difference for you? 
it's an excellent question. An engineer is not where I would start. Where I would start is with a loan officer that knows the business and understands the business and can really either give you a line of credit, okay, Aaron, or pre-approve you for a loan that's within your means if you're doing it all by yourself, okay? And you gotta show some expertise and some experience to your loan officer, okay? Not only I have a 700 FICO score or whatever the case may be, sometimes you, your credit score could be only 620 or 650. Okay, so you've got to establish a relationship with a loan officer. That's after you study the market and after you learn the business. So when you're talking to a loan officer, I'm not necessarily an expert, but I know that I'm going to focus in a certain area and buying these properties. And he could see it in my eyes and feel it in my bones that I know what I'm doing. And I'm not just going to risk a 20 or 30 percent down payment. Okay, on a property and lose my shirt, and then he's going to repossess the home. The lender is only interested in lending, so he's going to help you. And to answer your last part of your question, your loan officer a lot of times could be the best individual to speak to. You know why? Because he knows engineers. He knows guys that are in the business. He knows architects. He may even know and have remodeling companies that have he's done business with, with other individuals that have done business with him. and. First of all, he would definitely ask the companies that he has done business with if it's okay. If I am an agent buying a property, if I'm an investor buying a property, and you say, Albert, I'm sorry, I can't give you a name, that's okay. First of all, I know that you, you could go ahead and call that company that you've done business with, and may I send a referral to Albert, you know, because he's starting out, okay? And he wants to learn the business, and we really want to give him some good referrals on people and contractors, engineers, whatever the case may be, to make sure that he doesn't lose his investment and we have to foreclose on the property. Exactly. That's a great place to start with, with the good loan officer, how you'd mentioned. So what other parts of, um, of scaling a business would you kind of suggest? I know you mentioned being around good people, finding people who can connect you to others, but what other pieces of the puzzle are there to scaling a business? Uh, you know, um, after 40, 45 years in the business, I'm speaking a lot from experience and God is so good. If you are working with good people and it's hard to determine who the good people are, make sure you've got referrals from experienced individuals not, hey, my uncle is in the business and he could go ahead and give you a great price on a new roof or he's going to get the house out and rebuild it and put granite tops or whatever the case may be. Make sure that the referrals that you get with checked out, make sure you meet with them, make sure that you're able to work with them. Sometimes an engineer may give you a referral. Okay, so scaling the business and working in this business it's not an easy attribute to say, well, I know the business. Nobody knows the business perfectly. You're gonna stub your toes, so make sure that your referrals and your scale yourself. A friend of mine is very successful. We helped him build probably in less than five years, 82 homes from the standpoint of his portfolio, okay? And the secret was very simple. If he hears of an off a property that's for sale, he would make an offer immediately. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. He would have maybe four or five offers a week, okay, on different properties because he knew the area and he, he would drive by and maybe get a chance to go inside the house and inspect it because he learned the business the hard way. Do not start buying four or five homes a month, you know, because you've got a little bit of money. Just buy one or two homes. And if you want a retirement income, keep them as a rental. Within 10 years, if you have 10 homes that are free and clear or 15 homes in 15 years or whatever the case may be, multiply that times 1,000, not 1,500 or 2,000 a month. You're gonna have 15 to $20,000 a month in income. Absolutely, that's a great way to look at it. Um, kind of knowing when to hang on to it uh, as a rental. 
but, but can you kind of describe maybe, um, you know, how do you know, how are you able to distinguish whether you know, okay, I'm going to flip this property and, um, and sell it, or I'm going to keep it as a rental? How do you make that decision? Uh, it, it, that's, uh, that's really a wonderful question. A lot of times uh, the contractor, or if you will, the investor, gets into the business, okay, by looking at the property thinking, well, gee whiz, I'm going to make $20,000, okay? If you have a lender that's working with you and he's going to lend you some money based on the after renovation value, okay, based on your experience or based on your ability to make the make the pay, repayment, make the payments on the loan, okay? Then you say to myself, do I have a 20% net margin on the rental versus making twenty dollars to $25,000 profit on a home? Now, what does that mean? If your payment is $800 to 1000 a month, okay, and you're going to rent it for 1500 a month, Okay, now the thousand a month, let's say, would include maybe taxes and insurance because you have low rates, right, Aaron? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What I'm sharing with you is you've got to figure out for every dollar in underwriting and, and looking at a property, can I put a quarter in my pocket? In other words, if I am paying the mortgage, the taxes, and the insurance and the maintenance on a home, and making the renter feel like this is your, his home. As a matter of fact, you may lease a home with an option to buy, okay? Then he will take care of the home. And then you limit your expenses, you know, 50 to $100 maximum on repair by you, not by the tenant from the standpoint, a lot of, team, a lot of time the tenant says, wait a minute, if the air conditioner is going to go off, well, then the responsibility. So you got to give them some guarantees. But the first 50 to 100, maybe 150, 250 dollars should be the tenant. And you know what I would do if I can rent that house at 1500 and my PITI, principal interest taxes and insurance, is only a thousand? I wouldn't mind giving, giving him 20 to 25 percent margin on his rent towards an option to buy. I want him to make that home his. I want him to feel that this is his home and hopefully he'll make a profit eventually on that home. Be truthful with your tenants and, and, and whoever you're dealing with. Absolutely. Could you kind of expand a bit more on that, um, giving them the option to buy and what that process looks like? Sure. Um, if I have a home and I have an offer to sell it and make a profit and go to the second home, I'm going to make a little bit of cash, but I'm not going to build a portfolio. If I want to build a portfolio, I want to go into a situation where I know I can meet my debt. Okay. And so therefore on the lease with an option to buy, let's say, Albert, I love your home, man. You've done a fabulous job and I will take good care of it. I will check your background. I will check the last renter you rented from. I want to make sure that you can, you know, your income. A lot of people say, well, I can't give you the income. I check your credit. So I'm not going to give a lease with an option to buy to an individual that I'm going to have to kick out of my home or, you know, a victim, you know. <laughs> so you got to be very, very careful to make sure that when you lease a property, you should lease it for a minimum of six months to one year, preferably, to an individual that you can count on as a good renter and make him feel that that rental home will be his home eventually, and he could own it and hopefully take advantage of some of the profits, plus the little margin I'm gonna give him. Maybe 20% would that be, about 200, $250, $300 maximum that I'm gonna give him as an option. So guess what? That's $3,600 at 300 a month, okay? That could be his down payment, on a $120,000, $125,000 home at a 95% FHA or HUD loan. Absolutely. Could you uh, kind of expand on what an FHA and HUD loan is? Well, I'm not an FHA or HUD expert anymore, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but the, let's say you're the, one, you're the loan officer that's going to give me the opportunity to buy this home, okay? 
And, and I buy the home with hard money. I mean, I hate to say hard money, but let's face it. Uh, you know, if you want to buy that home and you get your, you know, you get the purchase of the home at your price, okay, Aaron, then I need somebody to lend me the money, like I said, with a pre-approval, you know, I want to make sure that I have the money to perform, okay, so I can give the seller a pre-approval letter. That's like cash. Am I right? That's right. Okay, so so now let's go back to, uh, to, to, your, to your question, which is really... Uh, 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 an excellent question. I do not know how to answer all of them, but one thing for sure, that you wanna make sure that you're doing the right transaction for your benefit and refinancing in the property. A lot of times I buy, I used to buy the, uh, the property in my name, okay? Then I would flip it my company, but maybe you will not, FHA will not lend you money if it's gonna be your uh, investment property. So usually any government loan, whether it's VA, FHA, whatever, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan, there's a program where you can get in the home for 3% down, okay? So instead of buying it in my name, if I want to keep it as a rental property, guess what? I will pay you off and I'll buy it in my name of the company, I'm sorry, my company's name and buy it myself to make it my residence and live in it for about six months to a year. Okay, so now I've got an FHA loan on the home and I've got maybe 110% of my cost, maybe most of my money back, and I got the down payment, you know, because I qualified, maybe a first time home buyer, okay? I'm not an expert in home financing or residence financing, but you can get in for 3%, 5% or 10% down and refinance it at 50% sometimes of your hard money cost. So if my hard money cost is 12, right now, the rates are like 3.875, maybe four and a half percent, okay? So the beautiful part about it, I myself can build my own portfolio within three to five years if I don't wanna go to just fix and flip and be like a wild investor. And that way I can learn the business, maybe do only two to three homes a year. A lot of people say, well, I'm never, never gonna get rich that way. Well, if you're gonna do two, three homes and keep them as a rental, how many homes will you have in 10 years? 20, 30 homes? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. There's an interesting kind of distinction between both of those things because it seems like, you know, you have one party who wants to, you know, flip all of those homes and, and you know, and make that quick money. And then the other party wants to maybe do what, what you're sort of, what you're sort of alluding to is building that portfolio. Mm-hmm. Well, it depends. You know, sometimes you can go in between. If I'm going to make twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and I can buy another home, and you're going to, I'm going to get that loan paid off, and you're going to pre pre approve me for another loan, I may be buying a duplex or a quadruplex, okay, or maybe an apartment project, okay. But going back to residences and homes, okay, single family dwellings, I find it to be a little bit more challenging but a little bit more on the conservative side. If I'm gonna flip and make some money, okay, and buy another property with the profit, I'm gonna make maybe two properties, okay, then I may flip it. But on the next home, I may keep it as a rental. It just depends, you know, you can have a waiting list on renters, believe it or not, okay? It depends what you want to do. Do you want to build a million dollar statement, a two million dollar statement, or a five million dollar statement using leverage? Or do you want to just go ahead and fix the home and flip it? Or do you want to just go ahead and get a buyer that's a tenant that will lease the home with an option to buy and keep it and refinance it at, a, at, your, at your bank and pay the hard money loan off? So you, there's, <laughs> there are a lot of interaction in finance. If you know your financing and what you're going to do, you got to know how to buy also. Okay, then the success will be yours. Absolutely. So in addition to that, are there any other um, maybe specific parts uh, of real estate finance that, that people should know? Well, a lot of people, you know, sometimes go to private investors uh, that may back them and they build their relationship with a private investor rather than a loan officer or a lending company. 
sometimes it's a great asset because they may let you pay interest only, you know, uh, until, you, you know, you get the renovation done. Um, they may even come win, with you as an equity partner, okay? And be careful. Don't go to friends and family at first. Go with investors that have done this business, <laughs> but they don't have time to, they don't have time to do it anymore. Yeah. But they would love to back you financially to start buying a property. And with God's help, you can have four or five lenders standing by because they want to do business with you because of your success within two, three years. That's right. Definitely. So could you kind of explain, you know, what, um, you know, what a private investor is as opposed to, you know, a, a lender? You should be an attorney. you got some great questions. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. And a private investor is an investor that's looking for cash flow, maybe in their sixties or seventies, maybe young, you know, young men also, young ladies, you know, the, want a cash flow and because you know a lot of investors they don't want to remodel properties anymore you know they they want to they they want to be coupon clippers if you will okay and and so therefore they say okay i'll tell you what after renovation value i know i only lent you sixty four thousand dollars when you bought the home that was valued a hundred thousand as is but after renovation value, now it's 125. He may come in as a partner, like I mentioned, or he may say, I tell you what, I'll go ahead and renew the note and give you the hundred thousand dollars because I don't want to worry about being a partner. And sometimes it's better not to take a partner, but it's up to you. If the guy really wants to be a partner, make sure that you are the general partner in a limited partnership in the company that you're going to structure. <laughs> I'm going into some legal ramifications here, but it's very difficult to find a private investor, but it's not impossible. A lot of people go get 3000 lists of investors, you know, and so on. But the best list you can ever have is word of mouth from investors that you know about, or maybe a loan officer would refer you to, believe it or not, or your bank may refer you or your priest. Okay. Uh, or, or maybe your engineer or architect, uh, you, you know, you got to build those relationships. The first two to three years are critical. Do you want to build wealth, wealth with leverage or do you want to build cash flow or do you want to benefit the investors in whom you are going to be serving from the standpoint of cash flow? Because if you're not serving a need with an investor, the investor doesn't need you. You got to show him that you're real and that you've done some business. So you may have to buy the first two, three homes, maybe to five homes on your own and build yourself a, a, a portfolio, not only of properties, but a resume that you can show the actual homes that you bought and how well you have done on them and tell them the truth. Oh, I made a real big mistake on this one, but four of them, I made 20,000 profit per home or something like that. Sure. Absolutely. Is there anything else that someone should know when they're trying to, you know, kind of scale or build a portfolio? Okay. Uh, relationships is everything, in my opinion. I like working with brokers. Okay. I really do. I like working with bankers. Okay. I like working with attorneys and CPAs. Okay. A lot of times you want to go to a courthouse. And we used to do that at an auction, but now auctions are crazy. You know, I would not, go, I haven't gone to an auction in years, uh, an auction, uh, because all of a sudden you're in a bidding war. And even though you, you put a limit on the property you're going to buy, some people are crazy. I don't know why, but they're overbidding on a property maybe. Okay. So the best lead you can have from CPA or an attorney that's handling a trust Maybe there was a death in the family. Maybe the family doesn't want that house anymore. Okay. Do your own research. Go to the county courthouse. Okay. Look at homes that you want to buy and that were built maybe in the 80s or maybe 70s. But be careful with asbestos and some other ramification you may find in a home. So it depends what neighborhood you want to be in and what kind of renters you want to look for. 
uh, build your relationship first with with your circle. There's a book called The Mastermind. I don't know if you heard of it. Uh, uh, Napoleon Hill. I'm sorry. The book called is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. It's a fantastic book. It gives you a formula to success. Okay. You could be a workaholic and run in circles, but know where you're going. Follow your train. Have a plan of action and follow that plan of action to the best of your ability. Do not be a rat in a maze or a mouse in a maze, you know, just going running and crazy and, and not going anywhere. <laughs> No, that's great advice. It, it it seems like at least now it's, um, you know, with technology and, you know, people moving in different directions all the time, it's hard to gain that focus. So how do you, you know, what, how do you go about planning not only your day, but also your, your business plan? Well, a lot of people take all the phone calls in the world. That's fine. Uh, it's not easy to, uh, okay, I'll, I will give you an idea when I wanted to build our portfolio, uh, going back to the last question, then answering your, your, your last question, this question, uh, I learned it the hard way. One time I was going so fast, you know, to a closing, supposedly after I showed a house, the policeman was chasing me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Makes my hair stand up. Man, I got scared. And I said, why was it going that fast? Okay. So I pulled over a big smile. I said, Hey man, I am so sorry. I think I was going a little bit over the speed limit. He said, yeah, you were really going over the speed limit. Not only five miles. He said, 10 miles. I said, okay, okay. Where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to a closing. What business are you in? I'm a real estate. Are you looking for a house? Guess what? That policeman became my client. I sold him a house eventually. Wow. You got to build relationship. Even if the, you know, things happen in life that is really weird. If you know, all things happen for the good, but just, you know, just do the best you can, be who you are, plan your day, but at the same time, you got to look at properties. You got to go re look at your remodeling, see how well it's going. You got to talk to your banker. You want to make sure that, you know, you have an uh, opportunity to renew and extend the loan with your banker. Relationship is everything. And, and don't, you don't want to be a millionaire in, in six months, maybe even a year. But I guarantee you, if I undertake you as a client and you follow my, my, my scheduling and my advice, I could build you a million dollar statement within a year. Hmm. Unless you want to just fix and flip, <laughs> 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 which is okay too. Fair enough. So, it What's what would the opposite of fix and flip be in this sense? Like you're saying, if they want to fix and flip, that's different. But what would they do with you? Well, with me, I, I like building an estate. Okay, uh, and be careful building homes. A lot of people don't like rentals. I, I, I don't like them much. But we used to go ahead and resell the home almost immediately after we we sold it. If the if the lender will allow, allow me a second lien, so you can build a half a million dollar statement in receivables, okay? If you buy enough homes and remodel them, okay. So I like estate planning, okay. I like to look at different investments. I like to look at cash flows that are safe, okay. Then I got into commercial real estate and investments and syndication. Okay, and and right now I'm averaging about one percent return a month, almost as much money as you're making. But I understand you're charging a little bit more, a little bit less these things. <laughs> so, so, so what I'm sharing with you, you can build a portfolio in real estate, but but it's not going to be easy. But that's the way I would go, rather than just fix and flip. That's my personal opinion. But if you want to fix and flip, that's fine too. Sure. So, but you're not going to build a million dollar statement in one year, I promise you. <laughs> it takes a little more than that, I guess. Yeah. If you, if you even bought five homes a month, okay, and you're making ten to $20,000, okay, that's 60 homes, okay. But I don't know too many individuals that can do 60 homes in a year, especially if they're starting out. Just go slowly, 
learn the hard way, learn at your cost and your experience and your expense and build that resume, build that relationship and buy one or two homes if you can find them and make sure that you're doing the right thing at the right time from the standpoint in the neighborhood, your subdivision or your zip code that you want to really work. Absolutely. That, that sounds like it's key. Well, the key to success is not easy. You got to be self-confident, number one. Number two, you have to have good credit because your credit and your signature speaks of who you are, okay? Number three, you got to build relationships. It could be the priest of your church. It, it could be a fellow parishioner. It could be your attorney. You know, your attorney may be an investor, okay? <laughs> your CPA, well, most CPAs, you know, may have some big names, but they don't give them to you. But if they know you have a transaction and you present a transaction to them, they may call that investor that's in the restaurant business or in the import export business, say, guess what? Albert's got a deal, man. You got to talk to him. <laughs> He's buying an apartment project for 50,000 a unit and the market is 100,000 a unit. I don't think there's a deal like that. <laughs> or he may, be buy, he may be buying a house, you know, uh, for 60,000, it's worth 100. And when he finishes with it, it's going to be worth 120,000. Okay. Yeah. You got to have a formula. You got to have a plan of action. You got to adjust your plan of action. Okay. But make sure you know where you're going. You cannot get from point A to point B without having some problems on the road. Okay. You, nobody's going to have that straight line to success. Okay. It's not going to be easy. But the beautiful part about it, if you work it diligently and truthfully, and be honest with your clients, your sellers, your buyers, your investors, your tenants, your lenders, your attorneys, your CPAs, your engineers, and your contractors. You should be hopefully on the road to success. Absolutely. Well said, Albert. Well, is there anything that you haven't said that you'd really just like to hit home? Well, right now, if you're looking for an investment, I can get you 1% return a month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, uh, that's okay. We are uh, making sure that we have investment grade opportunities, which is a little bit at my age, uh, uh, very difficult to find. But indeed, look at all opportunities, but focus on your goal. If you want to be a fix, fixer upper and a flipper, fantastic. If you want to build a real estate portfolio, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, you can do it, okay? You gotta have the right team around you. You gotta have a plan of action. You gotta walk the straight line, the straight and narrow, if you will, and do the best you can by all whom you touch. Well said, Albert. Terrific. Well, you know, maybe someone's watching this and they've really uh, enjoyed what you had to say. They want to get a hold of you. How can we? How can we? Uh, Maybe spend some time with you. How can we get a hold of you? Well, my phone number is 210-216-0166. As you know, I prefer texting rather than email. It's much faster. 210-216-0166. Uh, but thank God, I'm not saying I'm not looking for clients. Please forgive me. I'm not look I'm a finance consultant primarily. I am a licensed real estate broker. Okay, we used to originate loans and sell them also. So I've been on all the facets. I've taken a lot of courses. You got to study as much, but it, in books, but at the same time, there's nothing, no substitute for reality. Okay, my email is loans, L O A N S 782 at gmail.com. Like making a loan on a house, but we try to make two, three loans a year. So it's loans, plural, all small case letters, 782 at gmail.com. And we will consider undertaking a client that knows where he's going. And please understand, I don't know where I'm going all the time, but be truthful with me when you connect to make sure that I know your goals. Give me an executive summary. Give me one page about you and your goals. Can you outline the 10 major things 
that you want to accomplish in your life. And then if you do, give me your number one and two and three and how you plan to achieve them. We are not cheap. We are consultants, okay? I find you the best lenders. I will find you some contractors possibly. I might find you some good attorneys and CPAs. But if you have all that in hand, you don't need me. I want to wish you the best of luck. But with God's help and hard work, you can achieve your goal. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Albert. You've been a terrific guest. I, I sure learned a lot and I, I really appreciated um, all the great insight that you had to have. So thanks a lot. Well, I hope I was not outspoken. I know you guys, most of the people that are watching maybe have the formulas. Uh, but thank you for this opportunity also, Aaron. And I look forward to doing business with you again soon. God willing. Take care. And I appreciate you. Same here, Albert. Thank you. God bless.